नमस्ते यादिलवान हे नमस्ते नमस्ते हाउ आर यू गाइस Okay, let's sit up straight on your mat. So we will begin. Just close your eyes. And take any mudra that you prepare for yourself. We will begin our class with three arms together. Take a deep breath in. Join your hands together in front of your heart center. And pray to the God for today's practice. For today's energy, bow your head down, and then open your eyes while blinking. And namaste to everyone. So, how many people do we have today? Six, seven. All right. Okay, let's begin. So, day before yesterday, what did we? learn about forward bend i think so so let's move further go further for asva sanchalana or horse riding pose okay so before we jump into horse riding pose or asva sanchalana we will warm up okay so press your hands on the floor find the center of the support with your both hands now as you inhale lift your head up exhale drop your head down hump on your back push it forward just keep moving like this inhale lift your head up exhale drop your head down hump on your back just lift your head up make an arch in your back exhale drop your head down hump on your back so as you're inhaling making an arch on your back and just noticing how your breath is moving in and you are creating exhale drop your head down squeezing to your anterior group of muscles of your abdomen inhale again noticing your breath come up high exhale again dropping your head down hump on your back pushing your head keep forward one more time lift your head up keep pressing your hands exhale drop your head down hump on your back one more time noticing your breath lift your head up and then like see drop your head down hump on your back each and every breath is going to contribute to your movement and then press your palms tuck your toes under and then reach your hips high for the downward facing dog you spread your fingers out and press your all fingers evenly on the floor so that you can find that extension from your arms press your heels down and reach your hips up 
towards the ceiling. Press your palms, bend your knees, and then reach high, and then move back. So from here, we will fully, freely move with our knees. Just reach up, and then exhale, move your hip back. Reach up, and then move your hip back. Okay, so we are not going into plank. So from the downward facing dog, our hips are still at the peak, and we're just moving high, and then exhale. Again, press your hands, move your hips high, and then exhale. Just keep moving, five. Just engaging through your thighs, four. Three, just keep engaging through your thigh, two, and one. Press your palms and jump front, half pull up. Exhale, complete forward bend. Inhale, take your hands up over the head. Exhale again, bend forward. Inhale, half the look up. Just open up your chest. Exhale, press your hands on the floor, bend your knees again. Jump back, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And then downward facing dog. Now take your right leg up in the air. Exhale, step your right leg forward between your hands. Drop your back knee down. Untuck your toes, sink your hip forward, look in front, and maximize the space between your both legs. Keep sinking. Five, four, three, two, and one. Tuck your back toes under. Send your right leg again back for three leg downward facing dog all the way up. Pressing your hands on the floor. Exhale, release your right leg beside of your left leg. Pedal out your legs one by one. Bend your one leg at a time. Now send your left leg up in the air. Exhale. Between your hands, keep your back leg straight. Drop your back knee on the floor, untuck your toes, look in front. You can make a cup of finger with your both hands. Keep breathing in and out, letting your legs, your hips, moving against the gravity. Three, sorry, towards the gravity. Two, and one. Send your left leg again back for three leg down and facing dog. Exhale, again, step your left leg forward between your hands. This time, make a couple of fingers with your both hands. Keep your back leg straight. Now, start to swing forward and back. Five, four, three, two. Sustain your back leg up high in the air. And then one, exhale again. Send your left leg back to the plank. Lower the chest down, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now press your palms, bend your knees, jump front for the half look up. Exhale, completely bend forward. Inhale, half look up. Exhale, again bend forward. Now take your hands up over the head. Exhale, complete bend forward again. Inhale, half a look up. And then send your right leg back for Asusan Chanana horse riding pose. And then left leg back. Drop your knees down, chest down, chin down on the floor. And inhale, swing yourself forward for the cobra. Exhale, roll back for the downward facing dog. Now step your left leg forward. And then sink the hip down and keep bringing the response 
to your hips. Bring that information from the floor. How you are sinking your hips down with every exhalation. Exhale, step your right leg forward between your hands into forward bend. Inhale, take your hands up over the head all the way high. And slightly make an arch on your back without pushing your hip forward. Exhale, again bend forward from the hip joint. Inhale, half a look up. Exhale, take your left leg back. And then sink your hip down again. Three. Two. And then one. Now send your right leg back for the plank. Drop your knees down, chest down, chin down to the floor. Inhale, swing yourself forward. Exhale, roll back for the downward facing dog. Stay there. And the information develops in connection to your breath. Just keep breathing and out. Now step your right leg forward between your hands. Drop your back knee down. Look in front. Asusan Chalana. Just maximize the angle between your both legs and decreasing the space between your both legs. Keep pushing your hip forward. Very nice. Exhale, step your left leg forward between your hands into forward bend. Inhale, half a look up. Exhale, again, complete bend forward. Inhale, take your hands up over the head. Exhale, again, completely bend forward. Very nice. So from here, what you are going to do, just let your hands become heavier. Let your head become heavier. And just keep hanging into your pelvic girdle. Feel like you do not have weight on your spine. Your body weight is going to get shifted on your feet only. Just release your hand down. Keep your leg straight. Bend forward. 31. 5. 4. Just relieving that all tension from your spine. 3. Just letting go everything. 2. And 1. Now slowly, gently, as slow as possible. All the way come up. Breathe in from the back of the neck. Just maintain that hunch. Bring that awareness from your tailbone, from bottom of your spine, to lumbar region. Just go slow. Try bring the center of the gravity towards your leg. Open up. Go slow all the way come up. Breathe in from the back of the neck. Bring that sense. And then inhale, reach your hands up over the head again. Exhale, bend forward into forward bend. Inhale again, half a look up. Exhale, send your right leg back. Look in front. And then take both hands up for the warrior A or high lunge. And then hold for three. Keep your front leg strong. Two. And one. Exhale, hands on the floor. Step your left leg back to the plank. Lower your chest down, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. <coughs> Step your right leg forward. Arms high for the warrior A or high lunge. Three, two, 
and one exhale, hands on the floor, stretch your right leg back, and then Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now press your palms, bend your knees, jump front, half a look up. Exhale, complete bend forward. Inhale, all the way come up. And as make an arch on your back. Exhale, again bend forward from your hip joint. Now send your right leg back. And then left leg back. Drop the knees down, chest down, chin down on the floor. Inhale, swing forward for the cobra. Exhale, roll back for the downward facing dog. Now drop the knees down, resting child pose, and then relax. Okay, everyone, please come close to the camera. Let's talk about Asusan Chalana or Horse Lady Pose. So, do you know about the Horse Riding Pose? How do we do that pose? So, in that pose, that is a third or fourth posture of Sun Salutation, of Fata Sun Salutation. So in which your front leg would be bent and back leg would be behind. Now you're going to untuck your toes, look in front, sink your hip down. So this is the common alignment of the posture. Your front leg should be into 90 degree, back leg should be straight, and you're going to create the space between your legs. All right, so this is your Asasana Chalana. So what happens when you're rotating? So many times what happens like, um, beginners, they don't rotate their legs inward. So what is actually going to happen when you're performing this posture, your legs should rotate inward. If it's rotating outward, you will have that pain on your hip girdle, all right, belly girdle. So what you need to do, if your knees are challenging, you cannot go further than your knees. So you may have seen people, they also do this one, this, right? Because they do not have enough flexibility right here in your hip, in their pelvic girdle, all right? So when you're uh, stepping forward into Asva Sanchalana from the downward facing dog or the mountain, so people, they, they feel it's quite challenging when they are stepping forward. So what they have to do, they have to always lift their other arm off the floor and then they step forward. Even if you, if you have noticed, if you are also doing the same thing, you will also lift your one arm, one palm of the floor. Okay, so let's see how they do. Come up on the downward facing dog. You will also feel like you're going to lift your one palm off the floor. So from the mountain, when you're stepping right leg forward or left leg forward, how do you step forward and get into the posture? You step your right leg forward. Yes. Yes. So if you are super flexible or enough flexibility you have got in your hips, then it will be quite easy for you. But if you do not have enough flexibility, then it will be challenging and you have to lift your one palm of the floor in order to get your one leg forward. All right. So, so there's nothing wrong with that to lift your one palm of the floor when you are entering into this posture. So how do you enter from the mountain or from the forward bend, right? You send your one leg back, drop it back and down, keep your spine straight and sink your hips down. Oh, this is something that happens in your Asvasan Chalana. Your front leg should be bent hip 90 degree. If your knees going further than your knees, like further than your toes or further than your ankle, you will have that pain on your knee too, right? So many people, they have quite challenging knees. They cannot even bend their leg into 90 degree. 
or if they have got a lot of pressure on the knee they like their ligament and tendons start to they start to have that pain all right so what you have to do you have you can always bend your legs right here into this position do not go further than your toes keep it always back above your ankle or above your knee if it's, if it's still challenging then you don't need to try this posture okay so what else you can do in this posture you can take your back leg lift it all right so if you have back knee or challenging okay so you can use something underneath your back knee so that is going to be quite softened for the back knee okay so take the support of your arms take the support of the block if it's possible if you do not have blocks you can always roll a mat or use something like books or anything else okay then untuck your toes press your hands and keep your spine straight okay so one more thing what happened if you're sinking your hips too much down forward then you will have the pain on your back knee also right you can always back your tuck your back toes under in order to protect your back knee all right so that you can be more stable more stable into the posture and you can hold this particular posture for long period of time so here we have another posture in this asva sanchalana that is called what do we call that chandra namaskar do you know the chandra namaskar in chandra namaskar we usually take our arms over the head yes so this is also called crescent pose hmm? so in that you take your hands up and push your hip forward okay so let's try this posture as uh, chandra namaskar take your hands up over the head and push your hip forward do you feel any difference between both of them and if you feel so what are the differences that you feel so in chandra namaskar you are making arch on your back right the spinal extension is going to happen right there but in asva sanchalana you are just having that stretch in between your legs okay on your back hip flexor but in chandra namaskar you are extending your spine but one more thing what happens in chandra namaskar the the in pelvic girdle your bone to bone compression happens right here okay so let's suppose i'm doing chandra namaskar like this i'm taking my hands up over the head now here if i sink my hip down too much then i'll have this femur bone this is called femur bone and the pelvic girdle the bone to bone compression is start to happen in between your pelvic girdle all right so in order to release that pain or in order to release that uh, that compression you can always keep your front leg into 90 degree see the purpose of this posture is to feel that extension here and open up your chest not having that extension or that uh, compression on a front hip all right so you can always keep your front leg into 90 degree press your front heel down and then open up your chest without sinking your hip forward right so no need to sink your hip down you can always stay here is squeeze in your hips just sustain this posture for a little and then take your hands up you will have that same benefit same extension of your spine same extension on your back leg at the same time all right so let's do it one more time come up and without sinking your hip down did you understand what did i mean here yes so first try with sinking your hip down second try without sinking your hip down please unmute yourself to so that i can understand 
like your response also needed here uh, can you repeat the difference once again i think i missed the first part okay so in aswa sanchalana horse riding pose you are keeping your hands either side of your front leg all right but you are sinking your hip down so one more question right here like uh, why we are sinking your hip down right here but in this we do not sink our hip down because we have got support here of our arms and then we can sink our hip down and we won't have that pressure directly under your pelvic girdle like underneath your pelvic girdle the gravity is pulling it down because center of the gravity is here so the, with the support it won't give you too much pressure but without support sorry with the with the support you won't have that much pressure but without support you will have too much pressure on your back hip but if you are pressing your front leg into 90 degree and then taking your hands up you won't have that pressure which was coming earlier right here into this position okay so when your hands are down you can take the support and sink your hip down but if you do not have that support you you have to always keep your front leg into 90 degree and then open up the chest so understand just only one thing what is the purpose of the posture okay okay everyone so this was just a difference between both of them and rotation of your legs do you know about the rotation of your legs how they are going to rotate back leg and front leg now let's come up into the position and then you will understand so alignment is all about the observance how much do you observe your body just keep on sustaining that uh, that position and then feel that extension where is coming and if you're having that pain if your knees are challenging then how you are going to protect them so how your back leg is rotating personally it's rotating externally externally back leg yeah who said this i don't know alina yeah okay because Another it's in between story. a neutral or external that's all i'm feeling because if it was internally okay. that's how i would feel it externally it's like that so okay so yes it's okay it's okay so i think when you usually, usually you need to square your hips right so your yeah. back back side will like tilt to the front so it actually it's more like internal because you need to mm -hmm. square back. so you will put your front hips behind and the back hips you need to bring it forward actually to square your hips uh when you okay. do the lunge position yeah, very nice yeah. and others what do you think how are hips supposed to rotate mia you are trying too hard to understand how they are going to rotate i know <laughs> so, so i feel like your you're... back your back foot like your back leg is going to be like going internal and then you're straightening mm -hmm. your hips up yeah okay so it's quite confusing when you are getting into the portion same so just look at one person then you will understand who would like to perform here okay alina we'll try on you okay so can everyone see her which way shall i turn to make it clear no 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 any anyway is fine okay so like right leg forward right leg forward <laughs> left leg back yes so in this position her right leg is in front and back leg is behind okay so her hips should be square to the front of the mat 
and her leg into the should be into the ninety degree, or like less than the ninety degree. Okay, so sink your hip down, push your hip down towards the floor, and open up your chest. Now tuck your back toes under. Tuck your back toes under. Do you know tucking? Yes. Tuck your back toes under, and what do you feel like? How they are going to rotate? Inward or outward? Personally, right. externally. So keep, I don't know if everyone just else keep, feels anything. No, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Keep your left hand on your hip. Keep your left hand on your left hip. Keep your left hand on your left hip. So when you're pushing your hip forward, so how? What do you feel this? What is the rotation of this? So this is so called a lot the of compression internal. because. No, yeah. I don't so feel internal. When you're keeping your left hand on your left hip. So you're going to push your hip forward in order to make your hips square to the front of the mat. So this is going to yeah. be the internal rotation of your back leg, okay, or back hip. And front leg is going to rotate outward. So whenever you are going for the front split, front split means your one leg forward, one leg back. So your back leg will always start to rotate inward, whether you are in the warrior C or a standing split, like a standing. Do you know standing split? So in that also, we are rotating our back leg always inward in order to keep our hips square, okay? So this is the internal rotation, this is the outer rotation of the legs. Yeah. And I guess okay. maybe because I'm overly flexible, I feel that it's rotating externally rather than internally. And that's why I'm also pinching in my glutes, maybe. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so uh, so this is a co quite common mistake we usually do when we are getting into this uh, Asto Sanchalana. So we don't like bring that awareness on our back leg. So we just keep that rotating outward, outward, outward. And then front leg is also rotating outward. So if you're rotating your both legs outward, your hip will start to rotate out, like it's going to open like a book. But if you're rotating your front leg outward, back leg inward, then your hips will be maintained the square to the front of the mat. Understood? Yeah. So Rahul, with our back foot, our back, all our toes should be on the ground, like uh, flat. What, what did you say? Like all, so when with our back leg, all our toes yes. should be flat on the ground so that it's internal. Yeah, yeah it depends. It completely depends on you. How do you want to take that? Right. Like if you're tucking your toes under, you'll be more aware of your back leg. If you're not tucking your toes under, you won't be aware. Right. Mm -hmm. Always like in the posture, in each and any, any particular posture, we need to have something in order to bring that awareness or information from the floor. So when we are tucking our toes under, then we'll be more aware with our back leg. Okay. So, yeah. so just bringing that awareness, you can tuck your toes under. Otherwise, you can always untuck your toes. So let's do the same tuck or untuck so that you can understand the difference between both of them. All right. Let's perform. One more thing I would like to share with you. See, whenever we are doing any posture, so there we have got two parts, like leading part and then following part. Okay, leading part and following part. So let's suppose you are doing Asu Sanchalana. So here we have also leading part and following part. So leading part is something which is going to lead us. Let's suppose um, we are sending our right leg forward. At the time, our leading part is our front leg. So which has been dominated, dominated in this posture, but our back leg is a following part. We don't bring that awareness always in our following part. So let's put it in warrior C. Our leading part is our bottom leg, but the following part is our back leg. Let's suppose you are doing cobra pose. Okay, cobra pose you are doing. Our leading part is, leading part is to rotate our shoulders back, open up our chest, but following part is our leg, okay? The same thing here, 
in the aswa sanchalana our leading parties are front leg but the following parties are back leg so we need to always bring that awareness on the following part because leading part is quite easy to like uh, to control did you understand so let's suppose you are here into this position aswa sanchalana and you do not bring that awareness on your back leg so that is our following part if you do not bring that awareness on your back leg and you will start to rotate outward like this so it should be rotated inward but you are rotating outward so always bring that awareness into the following part like this so front leg will automatically be okay but your back leg needs to be okay by bringing that awareness so always remember to bring that awareness bring that information to your following part not only leading part leading part is going to be easily uh, maintained or sustained into the position okay yeah yeah so let's do one more posture here we have another variation into asta sanchalan or uh, chandra namaskar we can always keep our hands right here so still we are having that support of our arms we are extending our spine we are sinking our hips down but we are not having that compression compression bone to bone compression in between again come up into aswa sanchalana horse riding pose now sink your hip down and then keep your hands on your front knee open up your chest keep your hands straight push your hands forward so are you having that that compression bone to bone compression in your leg for me it's hard not to sink down just because naturally my hips would pull me down so i have to hold my yeah, yeah you 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 have got enough enough mobility and flexibility so yeah uh it won't like it won't be for you but but it still we need to just work on the alignment of the posture if uh, even after you are flexible maybe if we get into injury then absolutely be prepared press your hands that's the problem with and then don't do this okay so this is a support supported this atma sanchalan that you can try if you cannot take your hands back so any other question that you want to ask about this posture yes i want to ask uh, in this posture uh, is it required to rest on the following leg knee like yeah. is it required to place no no no, no 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 see each and every posture has different purpose so this if you are lifting your back knee of the floor that will be your uh, high lunge position okay so in high lunge our hips are square our hands are up over the head and while we are lifting our back knee of the floor in that we still need to have that support okay so let's suppose you are here against the gravity you are having that enough height from the floor by keeping your hands here and then sinking your hip down right you won't have that bone to bone compression here if you are still feeling that bone to bone compression here you need to just open up your chest and even had more extension nice extension over here so just create this space here and then open up the chest but when you are here in the aswa sanchalana or chandra namaskar you have to drop your back knee on the floor and then reach your chest up or reach your hands up or you can keep your hand either side if you like okay so whether you are doing this or this so it depends on what you are going to do Uh, when right. we do uh, when we are doing chandra and yet ashwa sanchalan where is like center of my weight because like if i'm back leg is resting and i'm all on my knees my knees are like hurting so back knee is... hurting or front knee huh back knee hurting or front knee back knee back knee so all of the weight back is knee. on back knee no 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 all of the not on the back knee but it should be on the center of the center of your body like to the hip So let's suppose you are here into aswa sanchalana 
So when you're taking support, it's going to be easy. The center of the body is here. But when you're here, into Chandra Namaskar, if your knee is hurting, it means you need to tuck your toes under or do something under the knee. I mean, like the body weight is not going to get shifted all the way back. It's going to be get over here. The center of the gravity is here, not on your knee. Okay, so keep tucking your back toes under so that you'll be more stable. Okay. Or so one more time, let's try. Only you, you try only. Is it uh, if we are getting uh, more pressure on back knee, that means our body is not balanced? Not balanced. It's not not balanced, but uh, the center of the gravity is not like you have pounds. So you need to find the center mm -hmm. of the gravity or take the all the support of your of your arms or the blocks because maybe you do not have enough strength or enough stability on your back knee. That's why you have that pain. Okay, so it all depends on the the more you practice, the more better understanding you will have. Okay, Shivani, try. Yes, it's hurting there. Yes, just uh, bring your back leg, like back front front foot, close to your like right below your knee. Yes, right below your knee. Yes, below your knee or move back. Yes. Now sink your hip down. Push your hip forward. Yes, push your hip forward. And then take your hands up. And then as you are here into this position, your knee always should be above your ankle. All right. And if you're sinking your hip too much forward, at the compression. So you need to release this compression. How are you going to release? Just make this duck of finger. This is called duck of finger. You can create it here and then pull up high. Just pull up high and then take your hands up. Yes, make an arch, create the space and then move back. Yes. If it's still your knees hurting, so like fold your mat and then use mat underneath your feet, underneath your knee, then it will be, it is going to be easier. Yes, very nice, Sujit. So this is how you can also perform this Chalana Maskar. Otherwise, you can always sink your hip down, but the alignment of the posture is going to be incorrect. All right, so we are going according, accordingly, whatever alignment says us. So ask a question. question. Oh, yeah, I have yes, a question. Yes. Um, how do I spell these poses? Like, how do I how write do you them? Spell? Yeah. Like it's the horse riding pose. Yeah. The horse riding pose. Horse yeah. riding pose. Ashwa Sanchalana. Ashwa. A S H W. A S H. Yep. A S H W A. Yep. Aswa Sanchalana, uh, wait, huh? S A N C H A L A N A. Okay. And the next one? Chandra Namaskar, the crescent lunge. The yep. Chandra Namaskar, C H A. C H A, yeah. N N N. D R A mm -hmm. Namaskar N A M A mm -hmm. S K A R. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Karen, you're not asking anything. What happened to you? Are you okay? Yeah, I, I think I'm doing it right. Okay, you're doing right. That's great. 
No, I would love your, um, if, to tell me if I'm doing it right. I, I'm just to confirm, I'm not positive, but. No, no, um, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. If you do not have question, that's good for me too. <laughs> okay, so any other question, Gargi ji? You're tired. Okay, so let's do one more or high lunch, all right? Now come up on the tabletop. Now send your right, uh, send your both legs back for the plank. Drop your knees down, chest down, chin down on the floor. Inhale, swing yourself forward. Exhale, roll back for the downward facing dog. Now you step your right leg forward, arms up over the head. So this is not a warrior A, it's a high lunge. Lift your back heel off the floor, back knee off the floor, back knee up, back knee up. Yes, Gargi, back knee straight. Very nice. Back leg all the way straight, like do not bend it at all. Just keep that straight. Yes, keep your front leg into 90 degree. Do not go lower than this, do not go higher than this. No, you can go higher than this, but do not go lower than this, right? Yes, this is your high lunge position. So here, are you having that same compression in your front leg? If you're having then create the space in between your pelvic girdle and your front leg. Just open up. Open high, very nice. And then exhale, hands on the floor. And step back to the plank. Drop your knees down, chest down, chin down on the floor. Inhale, swing yourself forward. Exhale, roll back for the downward facing dog. Now step your left leg forward, arms up. Again, take your hands up. So what we need to do is keep pressing your front heel down so that you can bring that information on your front inner thigh. Just keep pressing your front heel down and then reaching that information towards your hip and just creating, creating the space. And keep your back leg straight. Yes. Do not make any arch on your back. Just sustain this posterior pelvic tilt. So I'll... I'll Tell you tomorrow what is a posterior penalty, what is anterior penalty. Exhale, hands on the floor. Step your left leg back with a plank. Drop your knees, chest chin on the floor. Inhale, swing forward, breath goes with the ease. Exhale, roll back on your toes for the downward facing dog. And then drop your knees down, cross your legs, and sit up straight. Um, Raul? Yes? Uh, th th that was the first time I've ever heard that pretty much in every pose, like yes, warrior yes. one, yes. well, high lunge, the back leg, you internally rotate, and the front leg, you externally rotate, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what you said. And it's consistent yes. with warrior three and high yes. lunge. High lunge. I really, I really feel that. It makes a big difference. I've already, I've thought about that for high, for um, warrior three, but um, for a high lunge, it really makes a big difference in your hips. So thank, thank you, if that's right. Yeah, it's like your back leg will also always rotate inward and front leg will always yeah. rotate outward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. That was really that's different. Right. Okay. Okay, let's finish our class with one ohm followed by three something. Close your eyes. Breathe in and then out.
Now we will finish our class with one ohm followed by three shanti. Take a deep breath in. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Join your hands together in front of your heart center. And then bow your head down to the God. Honor yourself, honor your practice. And then open your eyes. Namaste to everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here. Enjoy your evening, enjoy your morning, afternoon, whatever is there. Bye bye. Thank you, Rahul. That was very good. Bye -bye. Very informative. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye.